Welcome to SAT Prep Thursday. Today, we're doing College Board SAT Practice Test number three, part four. This is a calculator section, so I will be using either a TI-30XS or a TI-30XA. Also, there's a file link in the description for this practice test. Michael swam 2,000 yard on each of the 18 days of the scatter plot above, showing his swim time for each corresponding heart rate after each swim. The line of best fit for the data is also shown. For the swim that took 34 minutes, Michael's actual heart rate was about how many beats per minute less than the rate predicted by the line of best fit. So if we take a look at 34 and come all the way up, this is the moment that we're talking about. His actual was coming in about two underneath the line, since we see these are increments of two on the left side. So when we look at the selection, 2B is the answer. Of the following four types of savings accounts plans, which option would yield ex exponential growth of the money in the account? So each successive year, 2% of the initial savings is added. And because we're staying on the initial savings, we're not really dealing with an exponential growth. Each successive year, 1.5% of the initial savings. Once again, it can't be that. Really has to make you think about what's going on with exponential growth, where you would have the amount of money that's put in times 0.01 times that amount, which would really give you P times 1.01 as year one. And as year two, you would have that 1.01 from year one and multiply that by 1.01 to give us year two, which is P times 1.01 squared. And for the following years, you would really go with P times 1.01 to the number of years that you're doing this. It's a compounding interest, exponential growth. You have to have that exponent. So now each successive year, 1% of the current value is added to the value of that account. That sounds pretty good. Each successive year, $100 is added. Well, we don't know how much money is even being dealt with there, so we can't say that D is the answer. We're left with C. The sum of three numbers is 855. One of the numbers, X, is 50% more than the sum of the other two numbers. What is the value of X? So first off, we know that X plus Y plus Z is 855. We also know that the sum of one number, or sorry, that one number, X, is, that's the equals, 50% more. So that's a 1.5 of the other two, X plus, or sorry, Y plus Z. This means that X divided by 1.5 is equal to Y plus Z. Now that's y plus z, which is nice because it occurs in both. So I get x plus x over 1.5 is equal to 855. x divided by 1.5 is actually 2 over 3x. Now 2 over 3x and 1x is going to give us 5 over 3x, and that's equal to 855. So if we divide both sides by 5 over 3, or we say 855 times 3 and divided by 5, then x is 513, which is b as the answer. Important to keep in mind that these figures are not drawn to scale. The angles shown above are acute, and the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. If A is equal to 4K minus 22 and B is equal to 6K minus 13, what is the value of K? Well, we start with that sine A is equal to cosine B. We know that A plus B is going to be equal to 90 degrees. This means we get 4K minus 22 plus 6K minus 13, and that's going to be equal to 90. So we combine these like terms to get 10K minus 35 is equal to 90. So we add 35 to both sides, getting 10K is 125, or K is 12.5. C is the answer. Mr. Cole has a beaker containing n milliliters of solution 
to distribute to the students in his chemistry class. If he gives each student three milliliters of solutions, he will have five milliliters left over. In order to give each student four milliliters of solution, he'll need an additional 21 milliliters. How many students are in the class? Well, to start out with, we understand that N is going to be equal to 3 milliliters per student plus the 5 that's left over. We also know that N, the number of milliliters, and 21 more would be needed to give 4 milliliters per student. So we have two equations. We're going to make this as n is equal to 4c minus 21. That way we have n and n, and we can set these equal to each other for 3c plus 5 is equal to 4c minus 21, giving us c is equal to 26, so d is the answer. A grain silo is built from two right circular cones and right circular cylinder with Internal measurements represented by this figure above. Of the following, which is the closest to the volume of the grain silo in cubic feet? Let's start with the very simple idea that the volume of one part of this is going to be equal to pi r squared h. Now this is the volume of the cylinder. So this is going to be equal to pi times 5 squared times 10, which means the volume of the cylinder is going to be equal to 250 pi. Now the second volume that we're going to have to figure out is of those cones. The volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared h. So we're dealing with 1 third pi 5 squared times 5 meaning the second volume would be equal to 125 over 3 pi. The volume of the whole is going to be equal to the first volume that we found plus two of the second volumes that we found. So we get 250 pi plus 2 times 125 over 3 pi. This is going to give us approximately... 1,000 pi over 3. Or you might call this 1046.67, and that is if you decided to use 3.14 as pi. This is going to take us up to D as the answer. In the xy plane, the line determined by the points 2k and k32 passes through the origin. Which of the following could be the value for k? So what we're considering here is slope, which is change in y over change in x. And we know that we're going to go through the point 0, 0. So change in y would be 32 minus 0. Change in x would be k minus 0. So this would give us 32 over k. Now, if we looked at the second point, then we would wind up with k minus 0 over 2 minus 0, which is k over 2. We have to understand that both of these slopes are actually the same thing. So we have 32 over k is equal to k over 2. So k squared is equal to 64, or k is plus or minus 8. Now we can't have a minus 8, that leaves us with plus 8, c is the answer. In planning maintenance for a city's infrastructure, a civil engineer estimates that starting from present, the population of the city will decrease by 10% every 20 years. If the present population of the city is 50,000, which of the following expression represents the engineer's estimates of the population of the city t years from now? So if we see this decrease of 10%, we're looking at a 0.9. This is our rate of what would be remaining. Now, every 20 years, when we talk about time, we tend to talk about one year. That means that time would be equal to 1 over 20. And we're dealing with A times R to the T power. So whatever the rate, 0.9 to the power of T, 
1 over 20. So I'm looking first at that. 0 0.9 to t over 20. That eliminates, that eliminates, and now I have only a choice of two, but that's not even correct. Now, the beginning point was 50,000, which does prove that D is the answer. The incomplete table above summarizes the number of left-handed students and right-handed students by gender for eighth grade students at Kessler Middle School. There are five times as many right-hand female students as there are left-handed female students. And there are nine times as many right-handed male students as there are left-handed male students. If there's a total of 18 left-handed students and 122 right-handed students in the, in the school, which of the following is the closest to the probability that a right-handed student selected at random is female? Now, they assume that none of the students are ambidextrous or right and left-handed. So we get to build a system of equations where x plus y is equal to 18. We also know that we're going to have a 5x plus 9y is equal to 122. Now, we're going to multiply this whole top equation by a negative 5 to give us negative 5x minus 5y is equal to 90. We add these two equations together to get 4y is equal to 32. This means that y is 8. So if y is 8, then x plus y being 18 means that x is 10. So we can say that 5 times 10 is equal to 5 times or sorry, that 5x is equal to 5 times 10, which is equal to 50 of the 122 students. So 50 of 122 is approximately 0 0.410, which is A. In the equation above, B and C are constants. If B is C minus 1 half, which of the following is true? So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract one equation from the other. This is going to give us 3x minus 3y plus b minus c. And this is going to be equal to 5x minus 5y plus negative 7 plus a 7, which is 0. That would go away. It's important to remember that B is equal to C minus 1 half. So we can say that 3X minus 3Y plus C minus 1 half minus C is equal to 5X minus 5Y. Now these C's will eliminate. So we're going to go to get x all by itself. So we're going to move we're going to move 5x to the other side giving us a negative 2x. This is going to be equal to move 3 to the other side making it positive giving us negative 2y. Move half to the other side so that we have a plus 1 half. Now I don't like all of how this is looking here at the moment, but you know, it more or less works out. I can divide everything by 2 so that I get x or by negative 2 so that I get x is equal to y minus 1 over 4. That happens to be what A reads back here in the beginning. Tickets for the school talent show cost $2. For students, $3 for adults. If Chris spends at least 11 but no more than $14 on X student tickets and one adult ticket, what is the one possible value of X? So we know that, you know, we're looking at $14 as the maximum. This can be equal to 2X plus 3 times 1 because we know there is one adult ticket. And we can also set this equal to 11. We're just doing two equations at the same time. Now that's a 3. I'm going to subtract 3 from everything at the same time to get 11 is 
2x, which is equal to 11 minus 3, which is 8. So let's divide everything by 2, and we get a 5.5 is equal to x is equal to 4. So we're looking at 4 or 5 as the answer. Can't go to 6 because we don't have enough money for that. The table above lists the ages of the first 12 United States presidents when they begun their terms in office. According to the table, what was the mean age in years of these presidents at the beginning of their term? We're going to round the answer to the nearest tenth. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of these numbers, 57, 62, 58, 58, 59, and so on. When we add all of them up, we're going to get 703. Now, there's 12 that are here, so we divide by 12. This is going to give us 58.6. If the expression above is rewritten in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constant, what is the value of b? So let's go ahead and get rid of these parentheses. We have a negative 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. Let's distribute this negative 2 so that we get a negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 1 sorry, plus two. Now, the thing is, if I were adding it all up and trying to figure it out, but it's only asking about this, that's a nine X. That means that nine is the answer for what B would be. In a circle with center O, central angle AOB has a measure of five pi over four radians. The area of the sector formed by the central angle. AOB is what fraction of the area of the circle? So really just starting out, we look at this picture and we have O as the center. We have AOB as the uh, part of the circle and we have five pi over four. So five pi over four, all over what we know a circle to be, which is two pi. This would be the same as five pi over four times one over 2 pi. The pi's would eliminate. 5 times 1 would give us 5. 4 times 2 would give us 8. So 5 over 8. Now if you would prefer a decimal, you'd get 0 0.625. An online store receives customer satisfaction ratings between 0 and 100, inclusive. In the first 10 ratings the store received, the average arithmetic mean of the rating was 75. What is the least value the store can receive for the 11th rating and still be able to have an average rate of at least 85 for the first 20 ratings? So what we know is we're dealing with the total, the sum, and I'm just using some notation. But if we added up all of those values, it would be equal to 75 when we divided by the 10 that was there. If we multiplied both sides of this by 10, we would get that the sum from 1 to 10, all 10 of those ratings, would have a sum of 750. If what I was after, move this paper up here, if what I was after was that the sum of the first 20 was equal to 85, Sorry, not the sum, the average. So we'd be dividing the sum by 20 to get 85. Then what I would be dealing with is the sum from 1 to 20 of that number would be equal to 1,700. So 1,700 minus 750 would give us 950. Now this is going to be equal to the sum of the 11th through the 20th value of x coming in. So if I was skipping one of these, so I'm looking at x sub 12 to x 20, I'm looking at the last nine. If the last nine of those were each a 100, then I would have a 900. So I would have 950 minus 900 to get a 50, meaning if nine out of 10 of the next 10 gave a 100, I would be able to take 50 as the least score for one of those values, giving us basically 50 is the answer. 
In the XY plane, if a point with coordinate AB lies in a solution set of the system of inequalities above, what is the maximum possibility or uh, maximum possible value of B? Okay, so let's just draw a graph to start with. And generally, my graphs are not particularly uh, super on. It, they do just good enough. I know that I have y is less than or equal to 5x. And this is my line right here. Now, I can see that the shading would be beneath that line. If I'm looking at y is less than or equal to negative 15x plus 3,000, it probably looks something like that, shaded over on this side. Let's consider negative 15x plus 3,000 being equal to 5x, that point of intersection. That means that I would have 3,000 is equal to 20x, or x is 150. Now to come back to that original where y must be less than or equal to 5 times x, which is a 150, this means that y would have to be less than or equal to 750. For the last two problems, we're going to use the following information. If shoppers enter a store at an average rate of R shoppers per minute and each stays in the store for an average time of T minutes, the average number of shoppers in the store N at any one time is given by the formula N is equal to RT. This relationship is known as Little's Law. The owner of Good Deals Store estimates that during the business hours, an average of three shoppers per minute enter the store and that each of them stays an average of 15 minutes. The store owner uses Little's Law to estimate that there are 45 shoppers in the store at any time. Little's Law can be applied to any part of the store, such as a particular department or the checkout lines. The store owner determines that during business hours, approximately 84 shoppers per hour make a purchase, and each of these shoppers spend an average of five minutes in the checkout line. At any time during the business hour, about how many shoppers on average are waiting in the checkout line to make a purchase at good deals? Well, let's start with that formula from the beginning where n is equal to rt. This means that n over t is equal to r. Now we also know that time is one hour and that one hour is 60 minutes. So if we have 84 shoppers per hour, this would be over one hour, but we're gonna change that to read 60 minutes. This is gonna be our rate, which is 1.4 shoppers per minute. So what happens if we let T equal five? then I would have n is equal to 1.4, the rate that we found, times the five minutes. So n would be equal to seven. The owner of Good Deal Store opens a new store across town. For the new store, the owner estimates that during business hours, an average of 90 shoppers per hour enter the store, and each of them stays an average of 12 minutes. The average number of shoppers in the new store at any time is what percent less than the average number of shoppers at the original store at any time? Note, we can ignore the percentage symbol when entering our answer, and for example, 42.1%, we would just simply enter 41. So here's the thing. The old store had 45 shoppers in the store at any time. So, so we're looking first 90 shoppers per hour. So this is 90 shoppers per hour. We're talking about hour in minutes, which means that we're talking about 1.5 shoppers per minute. Now, n is equal to rt, remember, and this is going to give us 1.5 as our rate that we just found times t, and that is 12 minutes. So n would be equal to 18. Now let's remember the old store had 45 shoppers in it at any given time. So now what we're looking at is 45 minus 18 divided by 45, because we're trying to look at a percent change. So we can also multiply it by 100 to turn it into the percent. This is gonna give us a 60%.